Why, hello there, Anxious Cynic, back again with another Mindimator tutorial. So as you may have seen from that opening video, what we have here is a good old block breaking tutorial, man. Uh, this was something that was requested pretty heavily recently, and I decided to go ahead and knock it out for you guys. So, as you saw, basically all we have here is just Steve mining a block, and it becomes more and more despaired until, poop, and stuff happens. I thought about, you know, doing a little bit more advanced stuff with this one, but this was the first way that it came to my mind to accomplish this, so I figured I'd just go ahead and show you guys this, and if I come up with a better way in the future, then uh, maybe we'll revisit this concept. So uh, there's a few things going on here. It's a little bit more complicated than I would like it to be, but let's go ahead and get started on how to accomplish this. So the first thing you're going to need, we're going to go ahead and just start this over. I'm not going to worry about the Steve thing, but uh, you want your regular block. You know, it could be anything you want. You know, in fact, for this example, let's just go ahead and change it. Let's make him, uh, he can mine some mortar. No, nah. uh, let's try a, a, a sap, what, what was this? I don't know. <laughs> a plank. Here we go. Why did I want to call it a sapling? So we got this block and what you want is... The, the damage texture to come over that. So one of the issues with Minimator is you can't import multiple textures at one time. Uh, you could possibly use an item sheet, but I'm not sure about that. So for this, I'm just going to show you the way that I know to do it right away. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go here. We're going to create another cube. We're just going to make a regular one. And as you can see, it actually spawned into our uh, other block here because we had it selected, which is convenient for us. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take the cube and we're going to up the size by 1.002. And as you can see, that that's just slightly bigger than the, the, uh, the plank without being like right on top of it. It just gives you the extra space to work with. Uh, to make sure it doesn't look like it overlaps. I'll give you an example of that in a minute. Uh, so here's what we got to do. We got to change the texture of our cube. Okay. And I've already imported all of the textures for the example uh, video. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just select that one for now, just so you can see what's going on here. But uh, here's how you would import them. This is the way I did it. You maybe don't have to do it exactly this way, but you go to your resources and you'll have this whole thing here. Uh, these obviously won't be there, but you go down here to this button and it says add a new resource from a file. So click on this and I have here in this folder all of the different uh, block breaking stages. This comes from the default Minecraft texture pack. This is where I got it from. So what you're going to have to do is click on each one of these and hit open and it's going to ask you this. By default it may be on skin, but you're going to want to switch it to texture and hit OK. And it's giving me this because I already have it open, so I'm going to click no on that. Anyway, you're going to do that for each one of these and import it in. Now, I'm probably going to try to include a file with this video so you guys maybe can skip this step. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's what you would have to do if you're trying to do it from scratch and you would have to just import all of these individually. All right. So let's just say you've got all of those imported. You're going to go back to your scene here and we've got the first one. And, uh, on the scene that I did here, I just went with every 10 frames. Um, or I, actually, what is this? Every 15 frames. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You know, your timing will be whatever your timing is. So what I'm going to do is on the first one, I have the, uh, the, the, the first, you know, stage zero. I'm sorry. I cannot talk today. Stage zero. So let's just say, uh, the, the block is pristine for now. So we're going to make it invisible. Now, this isn't a step that you have to do, but this is how you would do it from scratch. So it's not visible. And then at the first point where you want damage to show, it will become visible. And then from that point, every time you switch, you go here, well, let's say that this may be closed off to you at first. So it may look like this drop down texture. And then here you're going to have all the textures that you have in the scene. You can make it the camera texture like we did with the reflection tutorial. But for now, we're going to go to stage one because it's the succession to stage zero. And then we're going to make another keyframe. 
and then we're gonna go to stage two and so on and so forth so let's go ahead and just get all these laid out every time you make a keyframe and then you switch it up to the next frame of the uh the destroyed progress that new next texture all right so as you can see here we've got all of the frames here happening uh or whatever the keyframes all of the textures moving all you know everything's happening uh so what happens when you play it oh hang on let's actually deselect that so that way we don't see the stuff come up and then just like our other uh thing it goes up and it gets progressively more and more damaged so that's how you would show uh, a block becoming damaged, but now a little bonus tip how you would get it to destroy. Basically at the point where it destroys, you want this, the cube, the, the destroy texture to uh, go invisible, just like that. So as soon as that happens, then right there, as soon as it does that, then you might, if you want to do like I did, just for an example of he's like mining something, then uh, we're going to go ahead and make this 0. Point, let's just say 3. I think I did 2 on the other one, but never mind that. So, boop. And uh, let's actually move that a little closer. And just like we did, it flies over. Maybe make it tumble a little bit. Boop. Just like that. So it disappears, and then you get your little tiny block. Let's actually make it faster so it looks a little better. Doop. Something like that. Anyway, it's not important. So that's what you would do. And then, of course, if you want to go the extra mile, I actually created a uh, little particle preset here, and I call it Destroy Block. So we're going to import that. I will hopefully be able to easily include that into the thing for you guys, the download. So what we have here is when we spawn this one in, it's going to be right here. And what I want to do is bring it up to about half the block. So that'll be about eight on our Z axis. Uh, and that puts it right in the center of the block. Once again, it spawned here because I think we had the block selected when I brought it in, which is a cool tip for you when you bring something in, when something's selected, it'll usually spawn it there. Now that we've got that, let's double check our uh, settings here on our particle creator. I'm going to open the editor. And as you can see here, what I have is it spawns in a region and the region size is 16. So it's the exact size of our box. And the region obviously is cube there. I have it set up for uh, the ground to be the bounding box so that the particles will interact with the ground. And I have that set to 0 0.5. It's slightly higher than zero Z level so that um, you can actually kind of see the particles on top of the ground instead of them going directly into it a little bit. Something like that. It's just a minor detail. And basically what I did is I took the uh, grass explosion preset and I tweaked it. So this here is called smoke black, but it's actually your, your destroy particles. So just keep that in mind. And I tweaked some of these settings and what you get, as you saw, is this wonderful thing here with the explosion. So here's an issue. <clears throat> and this is good timing for this to come up, I guess. Uh, here's an issue you might run into. So what this is, is our cube texture is overlapping our wood plank. And that's obviously a bit of a problem. So what we want to do is go into our cube. And when you go to its settings, when you go into cube properties, you're going to notice a few things. One thing you're going to want to do is most likely turn off cast shadows. It, this probably doesn't make that much of a difference, but you, you can play with it and see what you want. I generally would recommend turning it off. So that way, if it's if you do anything crazy with it, you're not going to see a shadow from your destroy texture, which should be in the block, not hovering over it, casting shadows. So another thing you want to do, though, is go to render depth and bring it up to one. And what that does is it makes it so that the uh, the transparency of this block doesn't override the block underneath it. Something like that. I'm not very informed on the technical aspects of it, but that's what you're going to want to do to make sure that Minimator knows where this block is supposed to be and that you want to see what is in fact behind it. Something like that. Hopefully that solves that issue for you. And uh, one thing before we review our animation here is notice the sides of our cube if you look 
you can see this minor, minor overlapping. And this is why we uh, made the cube the scale that it is. Uh, instead of being, you know, one even, where it would just blend into the block and they would be fighting each other, uh, you could possibly make it 1.001 to eliminate even more of that slight overlap. It's up to you. You can tweak it the way you want to, but this is just the way I did as I had it on too, just to make sure it stands out enough so that when you back the camera up, it stays on top of it without too much of that Z clipping, as you can see. Possibly, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it starts to clip a little bit, so you want it to be a little bit off of it so that when you back up, the textures don't start fighting each other too much, if that makes any sense. All right, so this is what we got going on here. Very similar to uh, the animation that I created in the beginning there. And so, if you watch this, you just get this destroying texture taking over. And boop! Crashes and you can have it disappear. Basically, uh, what I did with the other one as well is I had this go invisible so that it poops and disappears as if Steve had picked it up. And that's pretty much it. Go ahead and bring this up and rewatch that one, maybe. Uh, that's pretty much how you do it. It's a little bit complicated, but I'm going to try to include these. Uh, this as somewhat of a rig for you guys, and I'll have a download link in the description. So if you'd rather just use that, then you can take it just like I did here. You can import this, hopefully. Uh, and when you go to the properties, let's go to our block, which is stone. And you can turn it into whatever uh, block you want. He's going to mine up some lava, I guess. <laughs> and then that way you can have it be whatever you want and not have to go through all these steps yourself. But if you wanted to go through all the steps yourself and do it on your own, that is how you would do it. So I hope that covers everything. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it was enjoyable. I apologize for my brain fartiness today and not being able to speak clearly. But hopefully <laughs> I got it all out. Anyway... Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Give me suggestions for future tutorials. And that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.